signs and wonders. Absolute grace. Complete freedom. A place of no condemnation. Zoe Ministries, where we dare to believe. Relying on the grace of God for everything. But also love is important. But, you know, God's grace came through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That we should not perish but have everlasting life. So God's love produced grace. Okay? God's love produced grace in our lives here today. But many people do not understand the love of God. They have no understanding of the love of God. It becomes a religious thing, oh, God loves me. But do you know God loves you? Do you know how much He loves you? He adores you. His thoughts are filled with you continuously every single day. That's how, he love, how much He loves you. He sent His Son, that's how much He loves you. He gave you grace through His Son, that's how much He loves you. Love is a powerful thing, but people do not comprehend it. That's why people struggle. I mean, I preach on it, on love, many times, but... I'll probably do that soon again. But this morning I want to teach and preach on grace. Acts 20 from verse 28 to verse 32. I'm going to talk about some stuff here this morning as the Lord leads. There's a lot of grace thing. Uh, the reason why I want to pre preach grace was because I've been hearing a lot and seeing a lot of this stuff. Um, that people are so-called grace people, but they're not. They're law people. Um, they say they're grace, but they're actually law. They're actually putting people back into bondage. Uh, sometimes yourself as well, you go from, uh, from grace, and suddenly you find yourself caught up again into the law thing, or your own, you know, laws that you start making uh, onto yourself, which will cost you, okay? There's only one way, and that's true submersion in grace. There's no other way but the complete thing of grace, Nothing else but grace, okay? In grace, you will see as well, my preach will empower you to do a lot of stuff. But there's no other way but grace. Grace, 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 and we're going to get into that just now. I, can, I preach on it so many times. There's always something new that the Lord reveals to me concerning this message of grace. Okay, Acts 20 from verse 28 to 32 says, I've got the Amplified, but you can go into the New King James as well. Take care and be on guard for yourself and the whole flock of a which the Holy Spirit has appointed you bishops and guardians. And already, you know, like myself here, God has appointed me over you as a guardian or as a bishop or to protect you concerning various things, okay? To shepherds, um, tend and feed and guide the church of the Lord of God, which he obtained for himself, buying it and saving it for himself, which his own blood, oh, with his own blood. So do you, God did it. You know, he bought this whole church, everything to himself, but we as teachers must guide you and stuff, and we are overseers over you concerning the, the church, concerning what God has given us. Then he says, I know that after I am gone, ferocious wolves will get in among you, not sparing the flock. So it's very important. Paul even said that. He says, you know what? My job is to protect you and stuff like that. But he knows when I leave, there will be various things. I could say doctrines. There will be people coming in here or people in your life that will try to distract you from the truth of the gospel. Even from among your own self men will come to the front who by saying perverse, distorted, and corrupt things will endeavor to draw you away from the disciple. Uh, this, um, this disciples after uh, disciples after them to their own party. In other words, people will distort. In other words, they will distort the truth. They perverse means perverse means not the truth. That's what perverse means. Perverse doesn't always mean promiscuous. It means perverse, not the truth. So people will try to pull you away from the truth of the gospel. They try to ensnare you of the truth of the gospel. Have you noticed? Let me give you a key. How do you recognize when people preach? Can I give you a key to see when it's a preacher is a good preacher or a bad preacher? Can I give you some keys? A, a, a bad preacher will always point out your faults and say to you, listen, you must stop doing this. You must not do that, whatever. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? Now that you're saved, you must stop doing this, you must stop doing that. A good preacher will always tell you who you are. Do you understand? You are made righteous, go for the gospel, there is grace, you know you're more than a conqueror. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you also hear people say that, and then they'll say the other, so it'll contaminate, you'll use the both. Always hear when a pre preacher preach, or somebody else is in, your, in the midst of you, what do they preach? Of course, there's a balance to the gospel rule. You know that we preach it in this, this church. But you'll see they'll come in to actually take you away from the truth. How many times, you hear me now as well, things come into this church or into a church or into the, 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 the whole um, community of Christianity to draw you away from the truth. It sounds so good on the ear. So much knowledge when somebody preaches. Yes, it sounds so good and it sounds so good. But it's just knowledge based. It's not revelation to change you. I can get into Jewish stuff, I can get into Greek stuff, I can go into whatever. And, but I love what Smith Wigglesworth says. He says, I'd rather anytime read the Bible in Holy Spirit than in Greek or in Hebrew. Anytime. Now, do you say you aren't as bad to go into Greek and to Hebrew? No, I also do that. But people just rely on that. It's a problem. And they will steer you away and slow but sure you start getting into works. It says here, Therefore be always alert and on your guard, being mindful that for the three years I've stopped night and day seriously to admonish and advise and exhort you uh, one, uh, by, uh, 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 one by one with tears. So he says admonish you, exhort you. So when you preach, yes, we'll preach serious things, but not condemnation to exhort you and excite you. Okay, this is, but come on, you can do it, man. You're more than a conqueror. See, that's what he did. He actually ad admonished people, exhorted him all the time. How many times you get a prophet or whatever, and they will start to t give you a word to actually make you feel like worse than the worst sinner out there. That's not the truth. Prophetic word and word of wisdom and knowledge should be to exhort you, to make you excited. Isn't it right? Use it, confirm or read what's in your heart, what's happening in your life. He says, and now, and now, brethren, I commit to you. Now he forces, now, brethren, I say to you, I commit to you, almost like I command you, in a good way. To you, God, I deposit you in His grace, entrusting you to His protection and, and care. And I commend to you the word of His grace. I commend to you the word of His grace. His word is just grace. Nothing else. His word is just grace. When people say, yeah, this grace thing is grace thing, yeah, but people just do what they want and whatever. I just want to push you and go into the law and slap you <laughs> and then come out of it again. But he says, I commit you to you, God. I deposit you in, in His charge, entrusting you to protection and, and care. And I commend you to the word of His grace, to His commandments and counsel and promise of His unmerited favor. It is able to build you up. What is grace there to do? To build you up and to give you your rightful inheritance among all God's set apart ones, those consecrated, purified, and transformed of soul. So what does grace do? It enables you to build you up, and to give you a rightful place to understand what is my inheritance, what is my place concerning the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what grace does. Grace empowers you to say, I know who I am. You know the song, I know who I am? See, that's what grace does. It should empower you to know, I know that I'm the righteousness, holy, set apart of God. But what do people preach? Be holy, stop sinning. See, that's wrong preaching. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, you make a decision every day concerning, am I going to do this, am I not going to do this? I'm not talking about that. You do normal decisions. Do you hear what I'm saying? But if I come, keep on preaching and saying you the grace of God and preaching who you are, what will happen to you? You'll become what I preach. 
Am I right? So why do I always preach to people, come on, man, you can see me, I healed the sick and I raised the dead, you can do the same. But what do many pastors and many anointed men of God do? I've got the power. They keep it to themselves, not telling the people you can do the same. Have you noticed many so-called uh, um, preachers that does great miracles? Have you seen that? Have you ever heard them, come on, man, you can do the same? Very few does. They all go up into Africa or to this place to go and get the miracle. Or go to Jerusalem to get the miracle. So what a lot of nonsense is that? Didn't the Bible say in John, it says this, you know what? The time is coming and is now at hand that you'll neither go up to Jerusalem, you know, or to any place to go and worship God, but you'll worship God from now off in spirit and in truth. There's no more a specific place or a specific church or whatever for you to say, this is a place where I should worship God. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's law. In other words, you are saying, there up in Africa or there by Israel, there's more anointing than in this church. Stupid. That is not right. Then you're busy making law. Am I saying that you cannot get your miracle there? Yes, you can. Am I saying these people are not anointed? No, they are. Do you hear what I'm saying? How many times people came to this church sitting here, they just got healed? Did I lay hands on them? I didn't. Where's, I mean, Angel's here this morning, Oscar. She just cleaned the church and God healed her without me even being here. So tell me, <laughs> how does that operate? It's called grace. It's called grace. It's called grace. She didn't ask for it. She didn't whatever of it. It was just there to just to touch her. Do you understand what grace is all about? It empowers you, and suddenly you overcome something you never could even overcome. That is the power of grace. That is the power of grace. I want you guys to understand that. And John 10, the whole thing about John 10 talks about, you know, you know, exceedingly abundantly, you know, the whole scripture that we have. But it, that whole scripture talks about the hireling, talks about false teachers coming in. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. It's talking about the false teacher. It's talking about people want to actually take you back into law, not track you, not pushing you towards grace. I want to put you, push you towards grace, the unmerited favor of God for you to produce in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Any amens? I like amen. It means agreement for you. You walk out here, you get your breakthrough. You see, that's what I'm saying. With my grace, it's such a beautiful thing that I can keep on preaching and keep on preaching, keep on preaching, keep on preaching. That's what people don't like when I say to people, bring the gays, bring the homosexual, bring the, the adulterer, bring the whatever, the murderer, bring them to this place. But law says, no, 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 you can't. You're defying this atmosphere. <laughs> what nonsense is that? This atmosphere is there to change you. This place is there to change you. Yes, it will challenge you, but it will change you. Dare to believe. That is the grace of God. But then we become just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now first fix your life and then come to church. What confidence is that? That's law. That's law. That's why I say many times to people, I say, you know, now that you know, understand this grace in this church, go and get them saved there, then bring them to church. But sometimes we just want to bring them to church. No, you have the power, you have the anointing, you have the wisdom and the love of God that will make them free then, then automatically they will see what you have. How do you get it? No, we, get, we sit under the word and they bring them to church. But love people, love them. By the grace and the mercy of God. You see, the whole thing, the whole thing is the gospel of grace. It's not the gospel of law. It's not the gospel of conditions. <laughs> it's the gospel of grace. That's why Old Testament, what happened in Old Testament? You had a covenant. So it was actually a covenant, not a testament. A covenant says, Mount Moriah, Mount Sinai. 
if you do Deuteronomy 28, 13, stuff like that, you know, if you do good, then you'll have it. If you do this, then you'll get it. But if you don't, you'll have this curse, and you'll have, get that curse, and you'll get more of this curse, and you have a family curses curse. You'll get a curse of a curse of a curse, and, and you'll just have some curses. <laughs> Because if you don't perform, you can't have. But grace says, no way, Jose. Grace says, I've already given you unmerited favor. There's nothing more that you can do to get more anointed. When people search, how did this man do this? How do I get more anointed? You cannot get more anointed than you are now. It's just revelation here needs to set in to know who you are. Then when you not start knowing who you are, it starts manifesting. Do you understand that? I want people to get this. We are trying so hard in our own ability to produce the glory of God. We're trying so hard to produce so many things in our life. And what happens? We become law people. And you're getting tired of it. And it makes you backslide. I like what Philippians 3, let's go to Philippians 3 from verse 1. I love what Paul says. Can I always refer to him? Because I want this, this morning when we do the communion, I want you to grasp it this morning. I, I, I love teaching grace. Oh, I love it. Faith and grace. Okay, and love as well. And this. Okay, I love preaching a lot of stuff. Is that okay? <laughs> from Philipp, Philippians 3 from verse 1 to about 14, he would say. Finally, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to, to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. He's referring to people. Referring to the stuff that people want to pull you away from. He refers to them as dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the uh, mutilation. It's talking about the circumcised. It's mutilation. The circumcised people. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. That word flesh, he was talking not about fleshly desires. He was talking about the He says, no good dwells in the law. He says here, though I am all, I'm also mighty, might to have con confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm more so. He says, if anybody should have confidence in the law, I have more confidence in the law. Because he explains now, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was the dude of dude. The ati from the atis. He was the withered connection. Better connection. He says, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee. So he was the bee's knees when it came to the Pharisees and stuff like that. Do you understand? He had such wisdom and such understanding of the, from Genesis right through to the Old Testament, right through. The first five books of the, he knew off by heart. He could, he could actually say, um, uh, um, speak it out by ver ver verbatim. He knew it off by heart. That's if you were a Pharisee, you had to knew all the stuff off by heart. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He understood the law. He was the man, he was the wuss oak. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. He says, all of these Jewish laws, all of this Jewish stuff, all of this do's and don'ts, all you must should, you shouldn't do, and all of these rituals, he says he counts it as a loss, but to gain Christ. He says, no way, Jose, we'll give another one, I'll just read to you just now, Paul, but some more of this stuff, I'll show you what Paul said. He says, verse 8, yet indeed I also count all things loss, everything a loss, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, his knowledge. Jesus, Christ Jesus, my Lord, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. He says he counts the law, the traditions that he'd been brought up as rubbish. Rub. 
fish. Rubbish. Now, if you hear me now saying this on TV, I think all of America will crucify me, and probably all of the Jewish people as well. But Paul said that, didn't he? He said, your Ten Commandments, all the stuff that your do's and don'ts, he says, I count as rubbish, insignificant, but to gain Christ. Now, people are putting heavy burdens upon so many other peoples concerning the gospel, the good news, to actually make you free. That's the problem. When you partake of this this morning, you need to know who you are, what he has done. But we put and lay heavy burdens upon ourselves. And he says here, verse 9, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. So he said, I just received him, I just believed him, and that made account of me for righteousness. No works, no nothing, and it's actually a free gift. Galatians 2.8, by grace you have been saved through faith. Grace saved you. Not even your faith could save you, but the faith of Christ saved you. That's grace. No works that man should boast. Ooh, I believe so hard that I just got that. No, it's the grace of God that made you get what you get. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. He's talking about now the new man, the new whatever. We're not going to get into that. Verse 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehend, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which, the things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize, the, for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's what he did. That's what he did. He's pushing towards the grace thing. He's pushing towards this thing. But what do we do? We have all stupid teachings. You must fast. You must pray seven hours a day. Do you hear what I'm saying? so that we can get more righteous. I'm not saying when God calls you to go and pray, you pray. Again, I want to stipulate that. Grace does not make you lazy. Do you hear? Grace should empower you to do more. Do you hear what I'm saying? I said to my wife, you know, many times, and I just do so many things, I get a hunger and a desire for God so much in me to go and just pray for hours. Do you hear what I'm saying? Grace empowers you to go and pray. Grace empowers you to go and read your Bible. But law says go and read your Bible. You must go and pray. Do you see the difference? That is the difference. Grace doesn't make you lazy. Grace empowers you to automatically do. When grace empowers you to automatically do, that is righteousness in action. Because God has given you righteousness now, your righteousness now, and when you get that grace, automatically you do the righteous act of laying hands, sowing, doing stuff, being led by the Spirit. Because righteousness is an act. It's not just a feeling. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, we're dancing on the ceiling. That's for free. <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? So Paul counted all as rubbish, but to gain Christ. The Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Corinthians says that. It says this, the, food, the, the, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. You get these people are so intellectual. God says, that's foolishness. That is so much foolishness. The, the, the greatest men of God that was on this planet was, were layman people. Surah Singh, Smith Wigglesworth, couldn't be better read. Surah Singh, an Indian dude, bare feet, walked over, whatever. He, did, he actually gave his Bible away. But he had such a powerful, you know, um, 
phrases about him. Why? Because it was simple. He had the simplicity of the gospel. Smith Rigglesworth had the simplicity of the gospel. They called him a pastor of faith. Why? He just believed. His, his father was saying, I just believe. It's not a work thing. I just believe what God says is the truth. That's what it is. But we make believe a work. I should believe. I should believe. I get more faith. I must get more faith. You already have enough faith. Thank you, Lisa. I'm preaching so good this morning for myself. I love this. I love it because when I preach, I preach for myself as well. Do you know that? I hear my own voice. I say, God, that's good. <laughs> I'm taking that. I mean, I mean, I really do. 1 Corinthians 2 from, one, from verse 1 to 5. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 1 to 5. Paul even said this as well. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom. How many times do you hear these people, uh, I was under the rabbi, I had a rabbi, and there's some more rabbi over me. And I was in Israel and studied for 30 years, and I did so much, and I did whatever. Whatever. And they hear these people on TV and stuff like that. There's such nice sayings. Very beautiful. Sounds good on the ear. But he says, yes. But when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech, of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. He says, no, I didn't. You see, sometimes the Lord, I said to the Lord, my spelling in my reading of the Bible sometimes, I don't get the words properly out. Have you noticed? Something that hinders me. But the Lord showed me, is that, Johan, it's not your wisdom. It's not how you speak. Not of that excellent, beautiful waving of speech that's going to change the people. Hi, my name is Pastor Johan Mankies from Zoe Ministries, South Africa, here in Rudderport. I just want to say thank you for, for watching this message. And I really pray that God has touched you, He has encouraged you, He has uplifted you in Jesus' name. Also, I want to say to you, if you've never made Jesus your Lord, it is very simple. All that you say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and I believe and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Very simple. Then you are saved. If you want more information about myself and about our ministry, please do not hesitate to visit our website and see what we're all about and what we have to offer. So I just want to say bless you again and thank you again for watching this awesome message. Amen. Bless you.